Hello there psychology students and welcome back to another topic review video. In the last couple of videos we've spent some time reviewing memory and today we are going to continue our review with unit 2 topic 5, storing memories. To start let's actually quick talk about the difference between sensory memory, short-term memory, working memory, and long-term memory. Sensory memory is where information from the environment is first taken in. Here information is held for just a second or two. Sensory memory Memory is the first stage of the multi-store model. It consists of iconic memory and echoic memory. Remember, iconic memory is our visual sensory memory. This memory only lasts for a fraction of a second, while our echoic memory is our auditory sensory memory, which lasts anywhere between one to four seconds. After we take sensory information in, we can see that if we focus our attention on the new information, we can move it to our short-term memory. This is where we hold information we're currently aware of and thinking about. Short-term memory generally lasts around 15 to 30 seconds and can only hold a small amount of information, generally about seven items. Now, working memory, on the other hand, is a more updated way of looking at short-term memory. Working memory doesn't view our short-term memory as just storage. Instead, it looks at it as a place where information is held and manipulated. Finally, there's long-term memory, which has essentially unlimited storage and could potentially last a lifetime. This is where information that's been successfully encoded and stored goes. Long-term memory includes explicit memories such as facts and personal experiences and implicit memories like riding a bike or skills that become automatic. Now we can see that when it comes to processing memories, we actually use different parts of the brain. The hippocampus and frontal lobes help with explicit memories, such as facts and experiences. Just remember that the hippocampus doesn't actually store memories permanently. Instead, it acts more like a processing hub, preparing information before sending it out to other regions of the brain. This transfer happens through memory consolidation, which is the process of turning short-term memories into long-term memories. During consolidation, neural connections are strengthened, which makes information easier to retrieve later on. Implicit memories, on the other hand, such as different skills and habits, work with other brain structures, such as the cerebellum and basal ganglia. So when we think about long-term memory, we can see actually two different systems at work, one for effortful conscious processing and one for automatic unconscious learning. All right, so now that we have an understanding of memory and how information moves through it, let's talk about how you can get more information into your long-term memory. Unfortunately for all of us, information doesn't just automatically flow from our sensory memory to our long-term memory. We need to put effort in. One of the ways in which we can strengthen a memory is through rehearsal, which can sometimes be as simple as repeating information over and over again. This is known as maintenance rehearsal, and you've probably done this right before a test. You repeat the definition of vocab words as your teacher's passing out the tests, hoping that you won't forget them. And this is great at keeping information in your short-term memory, but if you want your memories to last, well then you need to utilize elaborative rehearsal, which is when new information is connected to information that you already know, or when you add meaning behind the new information. Say you're trying to remember the psychological term classical conditioning. If you just keep repeating the definition, that's maintenance rehearsal. But if you connect it to something you already know, like remembering Pavlov those dogs drooling when they heard a bell, well, then you're using elaborative rehearsal. By attaching the new term to an example, you make it more meaningful and easier to remember in the future. So we can see that by utilizing rehearsal, we can strengthen a memory and keep it active. But not all memories come from just practice. Some people have a natural advantage. For instance, some people have what's called a highly superior autobiographical memory, which means they have an extraordinary ability to remember events from their own lives. And this is often due to the individual's biological processes. Individuals with a highly superior autobiographical memory will have extremely detailed and accurate memories even years later. For most people, autobiographical memory still plays a powerful role in their life. These are memories of events and experiences from our own lives. And they tend to be easier to recall because they are tied to our sense of self. Now, unfortunately, our storage system can be damaged which can result in issues with memory storage. 
For instance, if the hippocampus is damaged, an individual may find it hard to recall explicit memories. Generally, damage to the left hippocampus results in people struggling to remember verbal information, with damage to the right hippocampus resulting in an individual struggling to remember visual information. And it isn't just physical injuries that can damage our storage system. Individuals can also be impacted by developmental limitations and diseases, such as amnesia and Alzheimer's disease. Amnesia involves the temporary or permanent loss of memory. There are actually a couple types of amnesia that you want to be familiar with. The first is anterior grade amnesia, which is when a person can no longer form new memories. This type of amnesia almost always involves something happening to the hippocampus. Next is retrograde amnesia, which is when a person can no longer retrieve past information, and this could happen because of a blow to a person's head. Then there is source amnesia, which is when a person can remember the information but cannot recall where or how they learned it. And lastly, there's a type of amnesia that deals specifically with developmental limitations, and it's infantile amnesia, which is when an adult can no longer remember personal experiences from the early years of their life. For instance, can you remember what you did when you were three years old or four years old? These early memories were formed, but they often fade as you grow older. Due to your brain being underdeveloped at the time the memories were formed. Now, I also mentioned Alzheimer's disease, and this is a neurodegenerative disorder that impairs memory and cognitive functions of an individual. As this disease worsens, it disrupts the storage and retrieval of both new and old memories. These examples remind us that memory depends on both both healthy brain structures and developmental processes. When those systems are impaired, the ability to store and recall information is deeply affected. All right, well, there you have it. Another review video is done. Now, don't forget to go take the storage practice quiz in the ultimate review packet and subscribe if you found value in this video. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.